For over a century, the Ouija board has been both a silly slumber party game and a portal into the unknown. But in 2009, one man conjured a supernatural force that has since been experienced by countless others the world over. Is this just the case of a viral urban legend, or has something more sinister been unleashed? This week's episode is Zozo the Ouija Board Demon. Fills with dread, probably a murderer who wants you dead. It could be a ghost, a demon, or worse. Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse. It's hopeless, you're doomed. You'd call a priest if you could. You'd rather just listen to who? Sinister who? Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. I haven't spent any time with you or seen you at all in the last seven days. Oh, uh, we, yeah, we've been on the road for quite a bit. And um, I saw you just about an hour ago when we <laughs> departed from the airport. But we needed to record this so we can have uh, this go out tomorrow. Yes, we made it back despite lightning. We made it later than we thought we would coming back from the first leg of our tour. Thank you. So to- much fun. Oh my gosh, you guys is what made it fun. I mean, the cities were mm-hmm. great, St. Louis, Chicago, Milwaukee, but all y'all who came out, who came out, brought the full moon energy and had so much fun in the Q&As. Thank you so much. So We had such a delightful time in all of the cities, legitimately. Yes. We went to the City Museum in St. Louis, which is... Top three most bonkers place I've ever been to. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say most dangerous. I'm still wrapping my head around the fact that it's even allowed. I It's so bananas. But yeah. Sharp if you've edges. been there, you're from there, you know. And yeah. I we took a poll that evening at the show of round of applause if you've been injured at the city museum and it was a thundering almost, roar from the audience <laughs> almost 100 percent. when you have a children's museum that's made of like rebar and sharp edges and angles it like makes sense but I, we were sad because we were looking for the human-sized hamster wheel and we're searching around and then when we got up and found a maintenance person he said you know it they had to take it out due to too many injuries <laughs> sometimes you got to remove the giant hamster wheel, but they didn't remove everything. So no. there's still a lot of death defying things you could partake yeah. in there. There's plenty of things to do. Well, we did defy death because then we drove up from St. Louis to Chicago and we stopped in a place called Chinoa, Illinois, and we ate at a place called the Family <laughs> Restaurant. And my favorite thing is we set it on stage in Chicago and then a woman stood up in the Q&A and said, you went to the Chinoa Family Restaurant? I'm from there. You didn't drink the water, did you? And we were like, yeah, we did, because we ate at your restaurant, so we did. Who, um, we we kept asking, do they call it the restaurant? Do they yeah. call it Chinoa Family Restaurant? She said they call it CFR. CFR, short they and sweet. acronym, acronym only, but we're it was still great. Alive. Yeah, we ate the food, we're still alive. Yeah, it was so it. good. The food was so good. We ate at the Concord Grill, which was so good. Oh, in St. Louis, That yeah. wedding cake. Thank you for that wedding cake suggestion. It was unreal. We went to um, Chicago and had a bunch of great food there as well. Milwaukee, we... What's one thing, though, in Milwaukee we did not try? No, as you drive up. (laughs) The camel milk that (laughs) some people are really trying to push as the new milk. (laughs) Which is funny because Wisconsin's like dairy land, so I would think it would be a pro-cow place. But we saw more than one sign for camel milk as a better alternative. So then we Googled it and we came upon a website that was like, don't drink that weakling milk. Get your family on the real stuff. Don't be afraid to try the." So we were at Sprouts. On We left your house and we went to Sprouts to get food because we didn't have any groceries because we hadn't been home for seven days. And we're at Sprouts and just with a serious face, I went up to Paris and said, I'm going to ask, do you think they have camel milk here? <laughs> he said, of all places, they probably would have They it might. Here. Yeah. Oof. That description of it, though creamy with a salty finish is uh 
never i'll die first i yeah, it will like, die yeah. of thirst before i drink the camel milk yeah it it was very yeti-ish yeah yeah we ask but we love milwaukee we got to take selfies with the bronze fawns and mm-hmm. visit everyone so we're coming to charlotte on june 11th and raleigh on june 12th so if you know of any weird places in or around or between charlotte and raleigh let us know we love all kinds like the city museum whether it's a dangerous children's museum or restaurant whose water might be radioactive or exotic milks <laughs> Anything like that, let us know. That's the kind of weird stuff we love when we're out on the road talking about the moon. And good food recommendations because yes. all of you that gave us those, we hit up the ones we could and none of them disappointed. So oh, everyone's so doing good. a great job. Y'all are making this even more fun than it was going to be because all the crowds are great. Everything was great. The show is so much fun. If you haven't been or even if you have been. We've added and changed quite yeah. a bit of stuff. So come on back. You get to hear all about the darker side of the moon. It's everything you love about the show, but it's all centered around the moon. It's not an episode we release. It is our touring show. So there's video components, audience participation, polls, local twists, FMKs, local twists, and then, of course, all the stuff the moon does to us, what lurks up there, what people really think happened during the Apollo missions, and more. And McGruff comes with us. So McGruff, he's yes. there. Oh, how could I forget? He is there. <laughs> he won't forget. But yeah, we'll be in Charlotte on June 11th, Raleigh on June 12th, and then we're going to Cincinnati, Cleveland, Toronto, Kansas City, Oklahoma City, San Diego, Phoenix, Las Vegas, and we're ending it here in Dallas. So go over to uh, our website for all the details, dates, times, venues, and more at Sinisterhood.com slash live. Live shows. Well, this week's topic was referenced recently in a Freaky Friday mm-hmm. by way of And That's Why We Drink, which yes. our besties over there, we love when we have people say, I learned about you from And That's Why We Drink. And this one, they sent in a Freaky Friday saying, I almost got my ass haunted. And we're like, well, that could have been us because we <laughs> talked about this exact thing on a mini sode before. Yes, Balin sent this on on Freaky Friday number 107 and aptly titled Your Friends It and That's Why We Drink Got My Ass Haunted. And Balin <laughs> said, so listen to this episode at your own risk because in, uh, in, when Balin wrote in, she wrote, I don't say, write, or even think its name. M, however, did say it many times, and that is what's known to summon it. And what you're fixing to listen to, we say its name many times. A lot. A so lot. Many. I don't know that we knew that, perhaps. Or no, I mean, we just were throwing. Disregarded. Yeah. Uh, just caution to the wayside, I suppose. But, but yes, listen at your own risk. We, I mean, this was re- originally released around Halloween 2020. You'll hear us talk about Halloween, quarantine. We mentioned Man. you're in your third trimester at the time with Simon. What a travel back in time. These episodes are wild because, especially when they're pandemic heavy, just mm-hmm. how different everything was then and now and it's yeah. just it's we've all been through a lot and it's always i like i that's one of the best things i think about the podcast is how all of this is like a time capsule mm-hmm. and yes. later like my kids will be able to listen to like we talk about their births and being in the third trimester and a ouija board demon you know it's all <laughs> about balance aunt heather was feeling depressed and bought a garfield t-shirt with tanya tucker <laughs> lyrics on it which at the time i was like i don't even know what this says i just like it it's a tanya tucker song just so you don't have to DM you us. gotta wear it you, you gotta it find yeah. it I have it. I found it in the bottom of my uh, drawer, but it's one of those where I was like, oh, that was right when I bought this. So it gives you all these like clicks in your head that you're like, that was the time I was going mm-hmm. through that. So we're taking you back to Halloween 2020. And uh, like we said, we don't feel particularly cursed having said its name as many times as we did in this episode. So I think you'll be OK. But we've had people say like, I can't even listen to this minisode, which it was. It's not really a minisode. It's a full size episode. That's what we mm-hmm. accidentally do with a lot of minisodes. They just end up being full length. <laughs> But said, I, you know, I can't even listen to this or I don't want to listen while I'm alone because I'm so scared. But for the most part, we sort of roast Zach Bagans <laughs> a lot in it. So. And at the very end, we give you some full moon tips. Yes, it's very funny given our full moon energy show to hear me talk about when I worked at Legal Aid, how all of our cases were extra crazy because it was a full moon. Is it mm-hmm. true? You have to come to our show to find out. You got to come to the show and be part of the audience poll and you can weigh in. Weigh in. But until then, good luck. Godspeed. You're about to hear (laughs) all about Zozo the Ouija board demon. Enjoy.
It's a good one for Halloween. Whoa, spooky. I got a little spooked reading about this. I get spooked reading about Ouija boards, just period, full stop. I feel like they're uh, not to be trifled with. I used to love a Ouija board back when I was in middle school and high school. I don't remember if it went all the way back to elementary school. Perhaps. I definitely know it was a big staple at middle school slumber parties and probably even in high school. But then I had some witches a few years ago tell me, you shouldn't use a Ouija board ever. Like Mm-mm. they were doing, um, was it a cleansing or I went to this spooky bachelorette party, which by the way, most fun bachelorette party I've ever been to. It was super Sounds fun. Awesome. Yeah. We stayed at, um, oh shoot. What's that hotel downtown that's supposedly haunted? The Dolphus? Oh yeah. It, duh. My God. I got pregnancy brain, you guys. I'm in the third trimester. I can't remember anything that happens these days. We stayed at the Adolphus, where Heather and I also did, uh, stayed and did a whole episode on. And they came and they did like tarot readings, but they also were like, um, have you ever used a Ouija board? And I said, yes. And they're like, have you ever felt like something has been attached to you since then? Mm-hmm. And I was like, no. And they're like, okay, that's good. But that can happen. So don't ever use a Ouija board again. And I was like, oh, shit. And one of the other girls that was there, she had always felt like that. And they're like, you probably brought something out that has attached to you. And I think so they w- did like a cleansing to get it off of her. Well, that's, I mean, I think that's the issue is that a Ouija board is like a large piece of construction equipment. It's no one should use it unless you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. It's not that, you know, it's the average person. It's just it's dangerous. There's a lot that could go wrong. And I think a lot of people don't do like the shutdown at the end and like mm-hmm. the cleansing and stuff afterwards. It's just like, oh, that's fun. Put it back in the box and you've let something Mm-mm. out Mm-mm. that can't go back. Also, we say Ouija. Like squeegee. We, we, yeah. We say Ouija. We know that technically it's Ouija, I believe. Yes, I've also heard Ouija. Ouija. There's several pronunciations. We grew up saying Ouija. That's what we feel comfortable saying. So that's our our vernacular. That's our vernacular, be it right or wrong. So that's what we're going to call it in this episode. So, yeah, I, I haven't used a Ouija board in many years. We had one mysteriously (laughs) mailed to me. I guess it was about three years ago now, right? Two. It was, it was 2018 because we gave it away. Our live show, our very, mm-hmm. very first live show was October 26, 2018. <gasps> oh, yeah. 26. Almost, just a few almost, days ago. Yeah. Was the and anniversary. Then, uh, and we gave it away to yes, Marilla, our beloved, one of our OG original listeners and my kindergarten best friend. And we get made her sign a waiver because we didn't <laughs> yeah. want to, uh, any liability. But yeah, it just randomly showed up. And didn't we? We got the review on iTunes. I think there was yes, there was, a, was a review a on iTunes. It was a mysterious post. It only lasted once though, and I was hoping it became like a whole thing that we had to unravel. And then at my home, a Ouija board was shipped, and there was some. It was wrapped in butcher paper. I think I saved it. Because it had something scrawled on the front about um that was creepy or whatever. Yeah. So it's obviously someone that we know because <laughs> they, they know your address. They know where I live. And this was when we first started, so no one really even knew who we were or anything. Still, I don't know if we ever found out who did that. Um, I thought we uh, well, I, maybe we found out who did the creepy itunes we did, review we found and they that were out. separate so yeah. and the, the ouija board was separate so I, I don't know that we ever found out the ouija board i think i know who did it but i've never gotten confirmation it was still very spooky that uh-huh. it showed up you messaged me and said did you send this to my house and i said <laughs> no and you're like you're joking why are you kidding to stop messing with me and i was like i'm not that clever to do like i'm not gonna do that yeah and now mayor i guess marilla still has it do you know if she still has it I'm assuming she does. I'll probably ask her and just make sure. But uh, she's got a kid. Maybe she lets him play with it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Hopefully not. That's how you get a demon in your house. Is you yeah, just we... let your toddler play with a Ouija board. My sister got one and she played with it all the time. And 
my mom's not a Patreon. Ouch, salt in the wound. So she won't hear this. <laughs> I think my sister put ghosts in my parents' house. My dad and I both saw ghosts in my childhood home. Uh-oh. And I think it was after, I think it was Ouija board related. I think that she opened <gasps> oh, a portal. No, Shannon didn't hit goodbye on the planchette. No. You always got to hit that goodbye. <laughs> and so I never touched it. And then I watched freaking Paranormal Activity. Mm. And that's. There's a Ouija board that catches on fire in that. Mm-hmm. I'm not touching that. And I will not let one come in my home. Sinisterhood will be right back. My favorite spring cleaning takeaway is the post-clean clarity you get. Like, wow, have I been living like this? <laughs> it's kind of like when you find out that you've been paying a fortune for wireless when Mint Mobile has phone plans for $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. Wow, have I been affording this? It's time to switch to Mint Mobile and get unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you can bring along your phone number. You don't have to give up that phone number that you've had since high school. Mm -mm. And you can also bring along all your existing contacts. Mint Mobile is the official wireless supporter of Sinisterhood. Our our work phone, our work mobile is Mint Mobile. We bring it with us on tour, so it's important to be on the nation's largest 5G network and know that we're going to have high speed data. If we need to, you know, if when somebody's got a phone, we got this. We need to make a call. We need to get contacted. Mint Mobile has got our backs, no matter where we're at, and we're not breaking the bank paying for it. Mm-mm. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash sinisterhood. That's mintmobile.com slash sinisterhood. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash sinisterhood. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabyte on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. We don't have one in my home. I think there is one at my mom's house. Because what's weird is, and I read this whole really good article that the Smithsonian did about the history of the Ouija board, which we'll post in the show notes. It was just a child's game. Yes. Which is what's so crazy about the whole thing is it was intended just to be a game. And now it's morphed into this way to content. But how uh, unsettling is that, that that was a child's game? Let's yeah. contact the other side. <laughs> and it's, I think it's just the energy you put into it. And I mean, maybe we could have done it with a Mr. Bucket or some other more less freaky. You know, that's like what's kind a of a Mr. Goof- Bucket. His buckets of fun, Mr. Bucket. He spits things out and you put them back oh, in his Oh, that's head. right. Yes, it's yes, a little yes. spinny bucket. Or like, don't wake daddy. I don't know. We need to use another thing to conjure the unknown because the Ouija board's too freaky <laughs> Shoots now. Shoots and ladders. Yeah. I even made my own. Did you? Like they used to do back in the day. Yeah. Well, we what? have our Sinisterhood one. Oh, you do have one in your house then. It's, is it? I mean, there's only Sinisterhood letters. So if you're like, who are you? It'd be like, oh, or <laughs> well, that's sin, yeah, or you her. know it's in your house then. If it's There's spelling only <laughs> oh, would it? Um, oh, it's it, me. Uh, some people, including people I know, feel that it's um, what's the word? Uh, dangerous, I guess, to have anything Ouija board related. Oh, like, I I feel like we're safe on this one because it's us. Like you can't. There is no goodbye though. Now that I'm looking at uh-oh. it, so at the end, I guess you just be like, keep it creepy. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of goodbye. That's how we say goodbye it's to our people. Goodbye. That's yeah. true. That's true. Well, if you plan on getting your Ouija board out this Halloween, we're, we're here to tell you about uh, a dude that may show up that you might not want showing up in your house. No, did you? I didn't know about this before this no, suggestion. I didn't. This was actually a Patreon suggestion from Samira Day. So thank you, Samira. Mm-hmm. Hope I'm saying your name right for for this one. We thought it'd be a fun one for Halloween. Nice and spooky. Yes. The term Ouija may be a trademark owned by the toy maker Hasbro, but the concept of a divination board predates any claim of ownership. Hasbro lists 1890 as the first use of the term. Civilizations back to ancient China have used planchettes, small teardrop-shaped devices upon which fingers are placed during seances, and letter boards as way to contact the spirit realm. So even if it was a game, it was still kind of intended in that form with the planchette. 
Yes. Yeah, I remember the one that I made once, I think I was in middle school, was we just wrote the alphabet on pieces of cut up paper and put it mm-hmm. on the table and then used a clear glass. I'll tell you right now, we always contacted somebody. I'm sure it was one of us <laughs> doing it, but it was never a dull moment when the Ouija board got brought out. Homemade. And at, at one of my slumber parties, I was convinced that I had unleashed something and it was living in my closet. Oh, God. For weeks, I felt Your the mom presence had to, in there. She should have come in with a squirt bottle. I think I was beyond that. I think she was probably like, Christy, it's fine. Go to bed. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't, there's nothing in there. The Ouija board gained popularity in the years following the Civil War, with grieving survivors desperate to make contact with their deceased loved ones. But throughout years of use, some people have gotten more than they bargained for when using the old divination device. Everyone has a Ouija story, from slumber party shenanigans to modern-day seances. But since 2009, thrill-seekers have found that they weren't the only ones to all be visited by the same entity, a demon called Zozo. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. It's like Zool. It's like, that's such a, it's, Mm -hmm. there's something like evil, like, I guess it's rare. Yeah, it's like a rare name, too. Oh, yeah, just Zozo in general. I thought you meant Z names. Yeah, yeah, pretty rare. My brother's name's Zach. That's a really, that's a really common one. He's a demon. He's a demon. So (laughs) that's how we know. (laughs) According to believers, Zozo's demonic roots are of ancient origins, possibly African or Sumerian. Others feel this isn't correct, and that Zozo is simply being confused with Pazuzu, the infamous Mesopotamian wind demon. In ancient Babylon, humans made sacrifices to a demon called Bazozo. Then, according to Thrillist, there was a mention of Zozo centuries later in the Dictionario Infernal, first published in 1818. The book recounts an incident where the demon Zozo possessed a young girl in 1816, along with two other demons. Though the translation also indicates the girl's story was debunked, that still doesn't explain how this singular entity ended up with the ability to pop through in seemingly any Ouija board across the world. Well, it's definitely Pazuzu and the Meat Warlocks. <laughs> yeah, I had to put Pazuzu in there. I had to get a shout out to Pazuzu. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Every time I wear my Donna Laser and the Meat Warlock shirt, Ella goes, what's that? <laughs> and I'm like, it's a Meat Warlock. And she's like, is it for Halloween? And I'm like, yeah, I guess it's for Halloween. <laughs> it is. She always I... wants to know, what's it doing? And I'm like, I don't really know. I think it's casting a spell. <laughs> it's rocking the world. That's true. It's That's the world true. tour. <laughs> it's on tour right now. What were you going to say? Oh, as you say, when I wear mine, I feel hardcore, like a rock and roller. Like, I don't have any. <laughs> all my t-shirts are like Seinfeld or like, well, I just bought a Garfield t-shirt because I'm at a real low point in this quarantine. Oh, Brolo. no. Does it say uh, Mondays with him says, just with a cup of coffee? Uh, Garfield has a cowboy hat and it says, when I die, I'm not sure I'll go to heaven. I don't think they let cowboys in. I don't know what it is. It's real weird. It popped up as like a pop-up ad of, we think you would like this t-shirt. And I'm like, yeah, I would. I would like that (laughs) t-shirt. So my meat warlocks is like my coolest t-shirt. That's your, that's your punk rock t-shirt. According to Thrillist, 2009 was the earliest online mention of this same demonic force, visiting those brave enough to wield a planchette. Darren Evans, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, posted about his encounter with the spirit on the website True Ghost Tales. Having made contact with Zozo in multiple states and using various Ouija boards, Darren told Thrillist that he has encountered the demon too many times to count. I like that he put true before ghost stories on his website name. (laughs) Not fake ghost tales, guys. (laughs) It's like a restaurant that's like, not poison food. (laughs) Not going to get a coli food. (laughs) In Darren's story, seemingly the first to appear online, he claimed Zozo would often first present himself as a benevolent entity. During one encounter, Zozo even began by moving the planchette around to tell Darren he had come to take his family to paradise. However, when Darren asked where paradise was, Zozo's true intentions became clear. As the planchette slowly spelled out, H E L L. That's hard to do on a planchette, the hoo ha 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 ha. Yes, uh, <laughs> it takes I think a they long just time. go, oh, H A J J J J J. Yeah. Uh, I really feel like if a, any spiritual thing plans to quote, take you away, that means getting killed. That's yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Darren fell into that trap. 
<laughs> Zozo really set him up for that, and then he just fell right in. <laughs> candy from a baby. Darren also claimed the demon would curse at him through the board in languages that seemed to be Latin or Hebrew. Worst of all, Darren says conjuring the demon almost caused him to lose his young daughter. As Zozo allegedly tried to drown the toddler, threw her down the basement stairs, caused her to suffer temporary blindness, and infected her with a mysterious illness. Of the horrific events, Darren told Thrillist, We almost lost her, and that's when I began to suspect a demonic attack. If those things happened to your kid, would you suspect demonic attack? The drowning? He, uh, the wife left the baby in the bath yeah, alone yeah, and was that- distracted. <laughs> so I don't think that's the same as a demon drowning it. That's negligence. That's just neglect. Yeah, he walked in. And the baby was in the bathtub by herself under the water and couldn't sit up. And the mom wasn't there. Yeah. And, and the throwing down the basement stairs, don't you have, like, if you have stairs in your house, aren't there supposed to be baby gates? I don't have kids. I have a chihuahua. I have lots of baby gates. We have a lot of baby gates. And I'll tell you right now, none of them are for a baby. They're all for pedal <laughs> to keep her ass contained to a certain area of the house. So, yeah, from what I saw on the Ghost Adventures episode that they do on him he says the little girl got picked up at the top of like the stairs in their house house Mm -hmm. threw her down those then picked her up again Mm -hmm. threw her down another set of stairs correct yes so there's two sets of stairs this little girl got tossed down allegedly if you got a double baby gate the demon can't throw her through the gate yeah Uh, yeah i don't and they're hard to open there's, so I imagine they don't as even, a demon, it's very hard to, like, your your smoke hand can't grip the thing to release the lock on it. And I am a, a human person, and I can't open a baby gate, which is how I know I'm not ready for children, because I don't know <laughs> how to... I can't get myself out of them. I have to yeah, climb over them. We have one... We just recently took him down, actually. But we had one that drove me nuts, and it drove everyone else nuts, to the point where I would find out babysitters would just crawl over it because they couldn't figure out how to open it. It was a terrible baby game. You know you're safe. Mm Mm-hmm. In 2014, Zach Baggins and the Ghost Adventure crew traveled to Oklahoma City to provide assistance to Darren and his family, who, according to Zach, were tormented after summoning a real demon, Zozo, through a Ouija board. During the episode, Darren and the Ghost Adventures team once again used a Ouija board to contact Zozo, even though Darren had not used a board in 10 years. This is where I got tripped up. Sorry, because it's 2014 and he says he hasn't used a board in 10 years and he started posting about it in 2009. I don't know. I feel like the math didn't add up. Uh, a lot of this doesn't add up. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, I mean, we'll talk about the episode because it is, it's, it's something. a lot. It's it's a, it's a lot. lot. It's a lot, you guys. It was one of the most acted ones, I feel it, like. Honestly, it was the most one of the most entertaining ones I've seen. Yeah. I will say that. Upon seeming to make contact with the spirit, Darren and Nick ask the entity its name. The planchette then moves and spells out Z-O-Z-O repeatedly in a rainbow-like pattern several times, a move which Darren claims is classic Zozo behavior. They also have an EVP device, which picks up a disembodied voice, saying, You're cold. As well as some other unintelligible speech. Then, when Darren and the crew members ask, What did you try to do to me? The board spelled out K-I-L-L. The planchette then moved in a rapid circle, and Darren said he felt lightheaded. The two men then commanded Zozo to leave, and expressed desire to close the session by pointing the planchette to goodbye. And then they check the house and there's no, you know, spiritual movement afterwards or whatever. Oh, I'll tell you what. I couldn't find the whole episode. So I kept watching clips of the episode. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. it was very disjointed. But I got it. I got the gist of the whole thing. There's a lot that I didn't understand. Namely, why are we doing... Why Zach sets it up like, this is... We're, we're going to unleash a demon tonight. This is extremely dangerous. This same demon tried to kill Darren's kid, tried to possess Darren all in this house. And I just kept thinking, then why are we trying to bring it back? 
Yeah, the the wife is like, she's walking down the stairs and a hidden camera gets her and she goes, I fucking hate this house. <laughs> You're like, yeah, probably. <laughs> she also gets kind of attacked by the demon. She walks out, she starts coughing in the middle of the seance and starts. So Nick and Darren, Nick is from the Ghost Adventures crew. Zach, of course, goes off on him at one point and is like, why are you telling me to do it? And Nick's like, you get down here and do the Ouija board. And Zach's like, stop with this. Why don't you do it? Stuff. And I was like, you guys are bickering. Come they're on. like toddlers. Well, and so the wife starts coughing while they're they. It says Z-O-Z-O or whatever. And then it starts going Z-O-Z-O-Z-O-Z-O-Z-O like back and forth. And then she starts coughing and she's like, I got to go. And she's gone outside, and then they're like, are you here with us? And uh, simultaneously, she randomly walks up the stairs. She's got no shoes on. Her pants are undone. And they're like, why are you here? And she's like, "They t- he told me to come up here. And she starts acting real kind of loopy. And then she's like, he was real sexual. He really wanted me to come up here. And they're, and Zach's like, the demon Zozo is known for sexually assaulting people. And then she gets up and leaves again. And they are like, where is she? And they just like literally can't find her. She just walked away. She like, they find her at a gas station. <laughs> the scene I saw, she, they hadn't started the seance, seance yet, but they're outside and she walks up and she's all upset. And Zach's like, do you want him to do this? She's like, no, I don't. And they're like, we didn't plan on interviewing the wife, but. She walked up in the middle of all this, so we decided to interview her, and then her and Darren talk, and then she's like, and Zach's just like, after an intense discussion, she decided it was okay. And it was like a two-second discussion, and she's like, yeah, I'm fine with it. Let's go do it. I'll go too. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that you went from hell no to okay, let's go do it real quick. And the, uh, I will say Zach then tries, he's going to go out to try to find her. And he's like, I felt an emotional heaviness that wouldn't let me leave the house. So he's like sitting in this chair and then Nick comes down the stairs and and Zach is dramatically staring into nothingness. And Nick's like, dude, what's wrong with you? And Zach's like, nothing, nothing is wrong with me. And I'm like, all right, this is, it was like a little over the top. It was a little over the top. And a little over the top. Yeah. Yeah. But then one of the crew members also does this the thing because he says Zozo they unleashed it on a Ouija board and his friend tried to cut his throat. So he said that his friend had been da- had possessed by Paz- Pazuzu, whatever, Zozo. <laughs> Pazozo. <laughs> Sinisterhood will be right back. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. And my sleep preference is that we just got home from the airport and I want to go lay in my Helix bed. I miss you. I can't wait to go to sleep tonight (gasps) the amount of times on tour this week that we said we really do just miss our helix mattresses when we're (laughs) not with them it's uh it just doesn't hit the same and i'm so excited to go snuggle up in my mattress right now i can't wait helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses and so no matter who you are what type of body you have how you sleep they got it all for you. They've even got mattresses made just for kids. Ella has one. We mm-hmm. love it. My niece has one. She loves it too. And I feel like she can grow into it because Helix, they're comfortable for a long time. Mm-hmm. And they know that there is no better way to test out a new mattress than by actually sleeping on it in your own home, which is why Helix offers a 100-night trial and a 10 to 15-year warranty for you and your child to try your new Helix mattress. Everybody is unique. So whether you are a side, back, or stomach sleeper, or maybe you're all of the above, Helix offers a mattress just for you. Plus, it's getting warmer. We stepped Ugh. off that plane and Ugh. God, immediately just the humidity and the heat. Rude. Well, luckily, Helix has an enhanced cooling feature that helps regulate your body temperature no matter what season it is so you can still sleep comfortably. Mm-hmm. And you won't get all hot and sweaty because the setup is fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box and straight to your door for free. Plus, by supporting Helix, you're allowing them to support us and our show. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. The pillows are so good, you all. For our listeners, go to helixsleep.com slash creepy and use code helixpartner20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Well, after Darren's incident, he created his blog titled The Zozo Ouija Phenomenon to gather the stories of others who had encountered the ancient demon. The site features quotes from experts, including respected field demonologist John Zaffis, who said, The name has come up time and time again in my investigations. 
same demonologist that helped Stephen Lachance That's with right. his screaming house in the episode we just did. I wonder how one becomes a respected field demonologist. Maybe publishing on the topic, kind of like in mm. academia, if you have a peer-reviewed journal That's articles. True. Yes. <laughs> I hope they're also reviewed by demons. <laughs> Demon-reviewed. For, for accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> in 2016, additional details of Darren's initial contact with the demon emerged when the self-proclaimed zozoologist co-authored the book, The Zozo Phenomenon. In it, Darren says that his first encounter with Zozo actually took place in 1982, when he used a Ouija board he found in his then-girlfriend's basement. Most unnerving about this particular Ouija board was that mysteriously etched into the back was the name Zozo. Pick up some dirty Ouija board from a basement? You done did that to yourself. (laughs) This is where it also starts, like, the dates don't match up, Mm -hmm. and now you're like, okay, but why now are you saying... That you really encountered him in 1982, when in 2009 you said that was the first time. So a lot of stuff starts to come out that you wonder, why is this just now coming out? And the dates and timelines don't really really mesh. Yeah, you start adding stuff to the story. (laughs) Mm -hmm. The same book includes other details of his encounters with Zozo, including when the demon used the board to spell out, See you in hell. And car wreck at night alone with car being spelled with a K a year later, one of Darren's friends who had been at the summoning with Darren suffered a car accident at night alone. Another friend, Michael used the board with Darren on a different night. When Michael asked the demon how he would die, the board spelled out murder. A few months later, Michael collapsed in his own driveway. The result of being poisoned His murder remains unsolved, according to the book. Don't ask it how you're going to die. Never. I would never want to know that. I think about that a lot. Like if I some, uh, yeah, I know. (laughs) I have a lot of issues. Like sometimes I'm like, if someone was like, I can tell you when you're going to die and how it would be, would I want to know? I would not want to know those things. Mm, That's a good question. I don't know. I think I might like to know. I would be. Just counting down days if I knew the day I was going to die. I've probably quote this too much, but Tim McGraw says we should live like we're dying. <laughs> but like, you know, you should like, wouldn't That's you true, say though. if you knew you had six months to live, wouldn't you live, live differently yeah. than if you knew yeah. you had 36 years to live? No, that's a very good point. Yeah, we all should live every day like we're dying. I do I just in a different way, not the yeah. fun way. <laughs> <laughs> I have not moved from the same spot on my couch for like two weeks. I'm down. I was eating old soup out of a can the other day. Paris was like, are you okay? You have been wearing those sweatpants every day. And I'm like, no. <laughs> did you heat the soup up? I did. I did heat it up. You I did or did not? No, I did. It oh, was okay. old, old chicken cheese progresso soup. Cheese Ooh. enchilada soup. Oh, that's a good soup. I've had that. It was a good one. Uh, I dipped ch- tortilla chips in it. But still, Ooh, I was just nice. like, eating <laughs> soup in my house like with all the lights off he's like are you okay i'm like i'm doing my work i like work i still you know my laptop and everything but i'm just like huddled i don't know how we got on this I, like you're dying. Uh, I see nothing wrong with that honestly on yeah. a on a good day pre-covid that's yeah. me so i'm <laughs> i'm okay with it i'm shrunk into a little ball it's fine. <laughs> yeah i think um if i knew like i think it would just give me even more anxiety which i mm. certainly don't need any of to know like exactly when, but True. It, 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 to your point, I should be more appreciative of the days that I have and live, like Tim says, live every day like I'm dying <laughs> and not in the bad anxiety driven way, in the good, like go out and enjoy your life way. <laughs> I don't think my, that's what he meant. No, no. <laughs> my question for Darren is why do you keep inviting trouble dude well and in this case you're not i guess can you do ouija alone i was wondering if in these cases some of them they reference that he has another person but some of them it sounds like he's doing it alone and i think yeah you can yeah i think that you're more likely to get possessed or some shit if you do i would think so because you can't like fight it off but he uh had his friends participating i mean in this these accounts that he put in his book you know he's like me and this guy did it on this day then a couple weeks later me and this person so 
in that case, you're recklessly endangering the lives of others. Although, yeah. I guess arguably, Zodo, Zozo didn't put that man in a car wreck and did not poison Michael. Zozo was just like, Get, maybe he's nice. Maybe it was like a heads up. Like, you need to slow down when you're driving. Get a good I, night's rest. Don't I be sleepy. I got the impression that they are saying Zozo was responsible. Oh, not like future telling. Okay, well, I should. I don't know Zozo. because some other other things I read from people that claim that the same thing has happened to them. One lady said we conjured him, and my three year old was running around the house saying Zozo, Zozo. First of all, why is the three year old involved in your seance? Jeez, what if they weren't though, and then they just started saying it? Oh, that's even creepier. But she said the next morning they got in the car to go get breakfast, and they pulled up to a stop sign and a car hit them. And so she was blaming it on Zozo. Oh, not just negligent drivers. <laughs> While Darren's story is by all accounts terrifying, skeptics are quick to point out the many discrepancies within the tales. For example, while the first mention of the engraved board did not come out until 2016, seven years after Darren shared his story on True Ghost Tales, the details of the engraving seem to change depending on the interview Darren is giving. When Darren spoke with a New Jersey newspaper about the discovery, he claimed Zozo had been written on the front of the board, in the place where one would traditionally find the word Ouija. Surely, a bizarre detail such as this would not be misremembered. Yeah, it's always something like that versus saying, oh, it happened in May or June. I can't really remember. It was 1982. But something like, oh, it was written this way? Like, I think you would remember. Yeah, I think you would. I think and it's more, maybe, which is more dramatic, though, having it randomly carved in the back. I feel like on Ghost Adventures, he said it was carved in the back. I think back is creepier. Yeah. But also, if you're, if you started off telling the story that it was back, did you forget that you said that and then you mm. just changed it to front? Mm -hmm. Or you're, or do you say, well, I've been thinking about it, and I really think it was actually on the front. Yeah. Because I think for credibility purposes, you just stick with what you said in the, the beginning. Or say, you know, I thought it was carved on the back, but I maybe remember, you know, address it. Bring yeah. it out, not yeah. just slip one by everybody. Darren also insists that Zozo's origin began well before his encounter, claiming he found dozens of stories online when he initially began his search for others with similar experiences. However, Thrillist provides an interesting anecdote. Prior to Evan's blog post, there were virtually no internet search results with that name. It wasn't until after Darren's story that others began to come out of the woodwork with Zozo encounters of their own. So you have to ask yourself, is it simple correlation that maybe it, he sparked a memory or are people making it up? Mm-hmm. One does have to ask oneself that. While Zozo's origin story is a bit flimsy, and perhaps introduced by Darren himself, the hive mind of the internet has given life to this demonic force. Much like Slenderman, those that have decided to believe in Zozo have essentially willed him into the collective subconscious. Now, when people hoping to contact the demon hear an unexplained noise or feel a vibration of the planchette, they are more likely to believe that they have brought forth the hell demon. True. Or has the demon been reading the internet real or like just all <laughs> demons and they're like, if you really want to fuck with people, just tell them that you're Zozo. Mm. He does seem to get around quite a bit. Well, and they say that, you know, it's fear. Yeah. You know, if you are fearful of a spirit, it feeds it or whatever. And so if in your mind you're thinking, oh, my God, what if it's Zozo? I'm so scared. Whatever thing you conjured could possibly be like, I'm just going to say I'm Zozo because mm -hmm. it's going to fuck with this person more. That's true. Yeah, it's also, could it be, like, Beast of Bray Road or all those things we talk about where you're on a dark, scary road, you know the urban legend, you see something, and your mind wants it to be that, so it kind of connects that. If yeah. you're hoping you contact Zozo and then stuff starts happening, you're going to think, I did it. I and contacted what the, Zozo. The planchette's really trying to say yo-yo, and you misunderstood <laughs> yeah. it. Or YOLO. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like, it's just a bro demon lines. that's like, you know what? <laughs> you need to YOLO, bro. <laughs> There's a lot of things it could be saying. And as a demon, I would be frustrated. 
Yeah. If I was trying to say one thing and they just kept forcing Zozo on me. You're like, why? And they push it to Zine. You're like, no, back to (laughs) Y-O-L-O. We solved the mystery. The concept of blind belief in an entity causing one to think they have made contact with the, quote, other side is not a new one. In 1970, the Toronto Society for Physical Research, a group of scientists and psychologists who study the psychic and paranormal, conducted the Philip experiment, wherein they hoped to have participants in the study manifest a non-existent ghost. This is a great trick. I know it's technically a science experiment, but it is a huge... (laughs) This is such a great, like... You're pulling one over on these people. The video is something. This, first of all, the study went on for over a year. Yeah. It's, um, and it's, it's a very well known study and others have been done like it too, but this was kind of the first of its kind. In the study, test subjects were asked to conduct a seance in hopes of contacting a spirit named Philip Islesford. While Philip was completely made up by the scientists, the test group fully believed in the entity even claiming to feel the table vibrate, hear unexplained knocking sounds, and feel cold breezes and a presence in the room with them. In the end, the scientists concluded that the human mind is capable of creating spirits simply through imagination and persuasion. Or did these people unleash a demon? And they, you know, I feel like a lot of times demons are trickery. And if you're like, okay, we're going to contact our my grandma Okay, Grandma, is that you? It's going to say, yeah, because it's going to try to trick you to let it into the world. I don't think so in this case. The study went on for a year. Mm -hmm. And for, or maybe for a year, they tried to contact, it's a group of a bunch of old British people. (laughs) And they're sitting (laughs) around, they're sitting around this table. They're not even using a Ouija board. They just have their hands placed on this table like a seance. Mm -hmm. And... The scientists had given an entire backstory, quite impressive, of this Philip guy. He died in the Civil War. Actually, he died by suicide because his mistress, something had happened, and all, all there was all this backstory. But they weren't getting anywhere contacting him because they had all the lights on, and it was just like a conference room they're sitting in. And so then, about a year in... They said, you know what? We should try and make this feel more actually seancey. Mm. So they dimmed the lights. They put out candles. They put up a picture of a castle that they think Philip would have lived in. Mm-hmm. And like things that they thought Philip would like. And almost immediately they started seeing results. Oh. And a lot of it was, was, they unexplained kind of in the sense that like they and it was all filmed that like the leg the corner of a table lifts at one point the table would like slide across the carpeted floor even though it was like carpet and stuff what's the explanation the scientists say that their collective subconscious was making all of this happen and everything like they were all pushing it with their hands yeah well i'll get to why how that could be (laughs) Right now. (laughs) There is even a scientific explanation for the planchette moving during Ouija sessions. While it is possible the user made contact with someone on the other side, the scientific community attributes movements across the board to the ideomotor effect. This is when the muscles in the human body make small subconscious movements, movements that are so subtle that we don't even realize that we are the ones making them, not an outside force. Skeptics apply this same explanation to crystal pendulums and divination rods. And shoving a table when you're trying to talk to Philip. <laughs> yeah, so, and I think that would explain a lot of, especially like slumber party game, Ouija board stuff, of how things get moved. Even if you're like, I'm not moving it, I'm not moving it. You want it to be moved and your mm. body is subconsciously moving something. The same thing, as much as I love my crystal pendulum, I read this <laughs> whole explanation of why it actually moves and I was like... That makes sense. That's disappointing, but it makes sense. But we made contact with the ghost of the Adolphus with the crystal pendulum. That's, we think so. The scientists would say that because the weight of the pendulum at the bottom is is creating um, like a balance, you feel at the top that you're not moving at all. And it even specifically says, if you ask it to go a certain way, uh, rotate clockwise when I say something, even though you feel you're not moving it, your body is subconsciously moving and it will start to do it yeah so 
I think um, in this this study, they concluded that the the collective group was making all of this happen because they wanted it to happen. Mm. Sinisterhood will be right back. Like any good viral story, the belief in Zozo the Demon has been changed and updated depending on who is telling it. According to Stranger Dimensions, a blog dedicated to the paranormal, a Ouija user can be sure that Zozo is present if one of the following happens. The planchette draws figure eights or Zs on the board. The planchette repetitively spells out Z-O-Z-A, Z-O-Z-O, or even M-A-M-A, moving in a rapid left-to-right or right-to-left fashion. A conversation with one spirit is interrupted by another entity, which becomes increasingly antagonistic. The entity claims to be a deceased loved one. Other sources say Zozo make its presence known by knocking on walls and moving household objects. Someone on Reddit posted that they thought that they had unleashed it. And one of the commenters said, well, you, everybody knows that Zozo does da 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 da. So it's gotten to the point where it's like, like you said, the collective subconscious of everybody knows Zozo says that they're mama or they say it says it attacks. Someone said, oh, my, my wife and I did the Ouija board uh, one night. I'm like, why is that how you're spending your, okay, whatever. <laughs> and we think we unleashed Zozo. My wife's been feeling really shitty and sick and having headaches. And someone's like, the commenter said, oh, well, you know, Zozo always attacks the female. Or is, like, more likely to attack females He's got or a reputation. He does. He does. Also, a conversation with one spirit is interrupted by another entity, which becomes increasingly antagonistic. I think that's just because they were interrupted. Yeah, it's probably pissed off. They're, they're excited. <laughs> they had something they want to say. <laughs> and then Zozo comes in with his bullshit. Like the Kool-Aid man. The blog also goes on to caution those brave enough to ask questions of the Ouija from moving the planchette backwards in the alphabet. Apparently, moving backward through the alphabet allows demons and evil spirits to break into our world. By spelling out Z-O-Z-O, your hands are forced to move back and forth on the board, creating a possible door through which evil spirits can travel. Here's where I couldn't understand it. If you're spelling, don't you have to move back and forth? Like, if you're spelling anything, like, say you were spelling Saturday, S, you have to go back the other way to go A, back over to go T, U, R, back over to go D, A, back over to go Y. You know, like, you're Mm -hmm. you're having to, if you're really spelling something, I guess unless maybe they're saying going back and forth, like, Darren says he does the rainbow. If you're, otherwise, maybe it goes up to S, down to the bottom, up to A, down to the bottom, up to T, down to the, you know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh. To go, yeah, because when it does Zozo, it's the Z and the O are on the same level, aren't they? I think because so. the video I watched, which is in, it's either the Thrillist article or the Bustle article, so it'll be linked in the notes. Is supposedly of a girl getting possessed by Zozo while they're doing it. It's very silly. Yeah, but. It looks like their hands are just going, like, back and forth really fast because the Z and the O are, like, very close to each other. So maybe that's what it means more than, like, if you're having to, like, go up and over and down and stuff. But I'm saying because this cautions against going back and backwards in the alphabet, I'm guessing the way that you avoid that is to go down between Mm -hmm. each letter. But then Darren has it in Ghost Adventures and it starts, like, rapidly moving into, like, a circle. And he's like, I feel like I'm going to have a seizure I'm like, something's opening, and so there must be some... Again, it's like construction equipment. Leave it to the professionals. Don't be going (laughs) in circles. We don't know what's going to happen. That's true. There are those that believe the Zozo phenomenon is nothing more than a ripoff of the Zoso symbol, an ancient symbol representing the house of Saturn. This symbol was well known for representing Jimmy Page, frontman for the legendary Led Zeppelin, a band some associate with Satanism. Coincidentally, The font on the cover of Darren Evans' book, The Zozo Phenomenon, appears to be the same one the band used on their album covers. Darren is admittedly a huge Zeppelin fan, and at one point even had links to the band's site and Jimmy Page's autobiography on his own website. Is this all just a coincidence, a subconscious shout-out to his favorite band? Or did Darren manifest an online ghost story based on things he pulled from other sources? 
This is kind of weird. <laughs> and it's Z O S O. Yeah. The thing on Jimmy Page's logo. Yeah. And, but if you look on their album covers or CDs, the way, the font, the way it's spelled out is the exact font Darren used for the Zozo phenomenon. And you can, if you're not looking at it right, you can, you could mistake the S for a Z. Mm hmm. The second, yeah. Yeah. And Darren was a huge fan. Uh, mega fan is even what he called himself. A lot of people have always thought, even though I think Led Zeppelin's one of the greatest bands ever, they've been mm-hmm. associated with demonology, Satanism, stuff like that. Jimmy Page never came out and said why he was so attached to this symbol. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, a lot of people speculate it was because of something, the dark art, something like that. So it does make you wonder, was this all just like something he made up based on like something cool he saw on his band CD? Mm, trying to be like Jimmy Page. Yeah. Well, I mean, because it just got started in 2009 and then it takes off. Mm hmm. So, hmm. Well, regardless of what you believe, if you decide to get extra spooky this Halloween and dust off the old Ouija board. Beware your fate. The planchette suddenly spells out Z O Z O. Kaka, kaka. <laughs> so do. what? So what do we do? do? Was that a little tugboat? Do, do. That was a train. Chugga, 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 chugga. <laughs> By the way, someone messaged us that they make white noise machines and that the train noises are like the sixth most requested sound. A lot of Patreons have said, I live by a train track and it's very soothing, which reminded me, growing up, there was a train track not far from us. And because it was in the distance, I did find it very soothing. I had totally forgot about this. And I would often wonder at night, I wonder where that train's going. Yes. Maybe, what if I just ran out in the night and jumped on the train? Where would it take me? But... To clarify, the noise on this app was like, it sounded like it was going down a track that was off, off the rails. It sounds like you're on the, the mini mine train at yes. Six Flags. Yeah, exactly. It was not, <laughs> it was not a very soothing sound. There were no soothing like train horns or anything like that. To that, but my it, dad did jump on trains as a kid. He used to go from oh, Detroit yeah? to Canada. And I'm like, you just went to Canada? He's like, yeah, no one checked. You just jumped on the train. How did he get back? Another train? Jump on another train. <laughs> How old was he? Like 12. <laughs> Where did his parents think he was? They didn't care. I mean, they weren't. His dad was not uh, an attentive father. Was he gone mom, for days? Yeah, he said he would be gone for like weekends. He, he had four little sisters, so uh, he was the oldest. So I think the mom was like, yeah, whatever, you're fine. You're, it was the 60s, man. You're 12. You're probably 12 you're an adult. 21 back then. <laughs> yeah, Do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, so uh, old Zozo, man. Uh, I think that... People are summoning stuff in the Ouija board. I don't know that it's the same entity that's popping through. Mm. What about Darren's story? <sighs> well, <laughs> he's uh, if he does believe that this happened, and possibly he does, he's built a whole... I mean, again, it's like Stephen Lachance. He's built this mm. empire. I won't say empire. I mean, he's... I don't think he's a millionaire. A following, perhaps. But yeah, he's built something around it as far as a selling career. books and having his website and being on ghost adventures and TV shows and stuff. So even if he didn't believe it, he's like stuck in now. And maybe the maybe the demon that visited him or the entity or spirit or whatever that visited him really was called that. And then when he wrote about it, again, it gets in the collective subconscious. And so if a creepy entity is trying to freak you out it would take the form or at least just take the name of something like it would take the name of your deceased loved one so that you would talk to it maybe it takes this zozo name to spook people and make them extra scared and get more energy from them is there also a possibility he's made the whole thing up for sure i mean you watch him on ghost adventures and the acting is i've seen better (laughs) acting on all my children on daytime soap <laughs> operas. It was very Zach Baggins too. It was very dramatic. The best actor on the show, if he is not actually acting, is Nick. But is he the um, one with the beard? I think he's got short hair and like because there's three of them. Yeah, he's not. He doesn't have a beard. He has like short hair. But because he was in a room and something like he was, he seemed like he was genuinely scared. But this guy and his, Darren and his wife, 
I did not find their behavior credible on the mm. show. If you were on a jury, you would say, I'm sorry, I don't... Why you gotta bring up? Why you gotta bring up jury? I got a jury summons. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm sensitive. That's why. I, that's why I was saying. Yeah, you got my jury summons. No, I would say there. I would not find their testimony credible. It was so. It was very over the top. And she, at the beginning, they're like, "She's acting totally different now," and she was. But I think the key word is acting. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Also, um, yeah, who knows what conversations took place beforehand. Like when this happens, I want you to start having a coughing fit and then you go outside and I'm not even saying with crew, but perhaps between Darren and the wife or, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, like with any of these things. And like we talked about with Stephen Lachance too, it at some point becomes like your identity and your career. And this is how mm-hmm. you make money. So like you said, even if it was kind of a joke at first, you're dug in now. Yeah. It's it becomes can't. bigger than you. Yeah. You can't be like, oh, this, uh, just kidding. JK. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're, you can't do that. So, um, yeah, I think, um, I think there are times when people might summon something on a Ouija board. I think there's a lot of times like these videos of people summoning Zozo and stuff on YouTube where it's just for fun. And yeah. is it a fun, spooky video? Sure. Of course. But the problem is when you're, it's all fun and games till you get a real demon up in your house. You don't want that. I will tell you, we had an offer, uh, a listener messaged and said they are aware of a medium who will do seances over Zoom if you and I would like to do that. And I'm like, Christy, just watch the movie this, host. <laughs> I was just about to say, this is how host starts. I was like, we're not fixing to host ourselves. Hell fuck no no so, my god i think we're good <laughs> thanks for the offer but no thanks maybe if i had not honestly if i had not just watched that movie i would be way more inclined to do it but i can't do it i think when you movie. go like if you go to a seance somewhere that's one thing but being in your own house mm. then you just you after your own house up don't yeah. shit where you eat, man. Dude, I mean, ask the people on that Zoom call you know, on host. <laughs> no, you don't. I yeah. I um yeah, then you gotta sleep in your own house. At least if you go to like a haunted mansion to do a seance, yeah. you get to leave and like, oh that was fun, but now I'm back in the safety of my own house. Yeah. If you do it in your house, your house is no longer safe. <laughs> Did this to yourself. Mm. Well, Happy Halloween, you guys. Yes. Thank you for supporting the show and all of our spookiness. Yes. And um, I guess this, I think, will come out actually on Halloween. So, Oh, you know what else? The first time since the 1940s, there's going to be a full moon on Halloween. You know what? We were at my work today. We were doing case staffing where you all come in with your cases. And we have all had the most bizarre fact pattern cases situations and we i think it's the full moon i mean i think there's also, something Mercury's out there in retrograde at least there. it was it might be out now but yeah there's something in the air in the space in something it is a lot but i'm gonna bust out the old telescope on halloween mm, yes i'm gonna charge all my crystals and get my moon water oh that's a great idea i gotta charge crystals too Hmm. also put out a jug of water and let the moon charge it and then you drink it whenever you're feeling like sluggish or kind of <gasps> down i love and it it's an immediate perk it's Does it have good. to be a clear jug? Uh, I don't know. I've always used a clear jug. Like just an Ozarka? Like two I, gallon? We have like a glass jug. Oh, nice. I'm going to do so that. So I just put that out there. But I'm going to do that. I'm sure you could use, um, in fact, on an episode of uh, Married at First Sight, one of the girls does it. And she just puts out a glass of water on her balcony. Oh, smart. So, yeah. yeah. Simple. Yeah, I think you could do like an Ozarka jug or something like that. Charging up my jug. <laughs> Sinister Hood will be right back. Well, if you have a Zozo encounter or another weird Ouija board encounter, you can always send those stories into sinisterhood.com slash freaky Friday. We yeah. love stories like this. So send them on in. Like you said, you, our brains get like, Oh, that's when that was going on. Maybe mm-hmm. this story reminded you of something that 
maybe you'd repressed, you yes. know, <laughs> <laughs> triggered a memory or like, cause we, you know, we talked, we were talking about childhood slumber party and mm-hmm. messing with the Ouija board and you were saying you made your own and stuff. So oh, yeah. if y'all have y'all fucked around with the Ouija board and found out. We want to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you like our free episodes, you'll love our Patreon bonus content, which was a mini so that we recorded several years ago that you just got to hear. That's just some of the content that goes on over there. You can also join for free to see what we're up to next or dive into over 800 hours of bonus content. Yep, coming up this week, we have a Judge Christie listener docket, and we also have a True Crime Headlines coming soon with some recent... Uh, big case that's been taken over TikTok, as well as an mm-hmm. update of a prior case we talked about. And if you're not sure if you want to join our Patreon or not, try a free trial. It's where you can join for a week. And if you cancel before the week's over, you won't get charged. But during that week, feel free to binge listen to anything, whether it's ad-free episodes, you want to check out an archived version of our monthly live stream Q&A or one of our quarterly bonus contents. You can listen to audio bonus contents like Judge Christie, Am I the Asshole, True Crime Headlines, and more. Check out some of our other mini-sodes. And and we also have merch discounts. And what's the best part of Patreon, Christy? Oh, man. The tour proves this more than ever. A community mm-hmm. of the best listeners on the whole internet. Mm-hmm. And for recent patrons, thank you so much for supporting the show. And make sure you stick around after our sign-offs to hear your shout-out. And head over to Sinisterhood.com and click shop on the top banner to check out Sinisterhood merch like our Believe and Be Kind t-shirts. We saw some folks at the tour wearing those. They look so great. And it's always it. such a heartwarming thing. It's, I mean, I'm, I feel happy about it. It's not even my kid. But for you to see <laughs> some of oh, Ella's art on, uh, on merch. So, yeah, check those out. You can get them uh, in kids, adults, toddler sizes. And we also have mugs, totes, stickers, and clothes for your kiddos. There's also a couple items still on clearance. So be sure to check that out as well. And you can use your merch discounts from Patreon and get all sorts of Stack treat em. yourself, treat mm-hmm. yourself to something with a little discount. And while you're on our website, you can also review the show. We make it super simple to give us a review. We love five star ones. Those are our faves. Mm-hmm. You can also follow us on socials and check out the episode description for sources used during our research. You'll also find fun things like topic based playlists and links to all the live show tickets for our full moon energy tour in 2024. You can follow us on Instagram and threads at Sinisterhood Pod and like us on Facebook at Sinisterhood. You can watch video versions of some of our episodes as well as clips from Freaky Fridays on our YouTube and our TikTok at Sinisterhood Podcast. And you can order custom video shout outs for yourself, for a loved one. It's Father's Day is coming up. Graduations are happening right now. A cameo makes a great gift for a Sinisterhood lover in your life of like, what can I get that I know they don't already have? Blammo, it's a cameo at cameo.com slash sinisterhood. We had so many people at the Q and A's or during the show also tell us you did a cameo for me and it was, I was going through law school and now I've graduated. We had so many updates or people just saying like, thank you. We've had a a request for a future cameo where we're going to get to reveal some very exciting information. So it was so cool to see like, People in real life that we've got to share these special moments with. And we love that you come up and say something to us. So thank you so much. Absolutely. We love to do it on the front end. It's fun to do the cameo, but it's like even more special when we get a cameo update. So if you've gotten a cameo from us, let us know. Tag us on social media or send us an email because we love that. And uh, Mm -hmm. Christy, if they want to tag you on social media, what are your social media handles? I'm on Instagram and threads at Christy M. Wallace and TikTok at Christy or GTFO. Heather? I'm on the internet at Heather versus the world. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for supporting the show on Patreon. Here are your special Patreon shout outs. Jen Atchison. Michelle Robb. Callie. Caroline Huygen Carla Zabala Caroline Haugen Carla Zabala Logan Wraith Healer Deanna Hebb Erica Papke Cynthia E Kendall Johnson Sarah Venucci Tracy Nelson Aubrey Leslie Chapman Anne Big Queen Tash Raina Strickland Bethany B Dora Benedek Quinn West Carly Rosencrantz Adriana Shue 
and Jennifer Needham. Thank you so much for supporting this show, everybody. We could not do this without you. We love and appreciate all of you so much. We hope we pronounce your names correctly. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep it creepy. Mwahaha.